Hi everybody, today we are talking about multi armed bandits. I'm going to start from a slide about reinforcement learning and after that we will define a problem that we need to solve and then we'll talk about bandits. Last week Yoga talked about machine learning, specifically about supervised and unsupervised learning. Just to rehash, supervised learning is the machine learning task of inferring a function from labeled training data. Yogi gave an example of house price prediction and another example of supervised learning shown on the slide is classification. Based on training data, an algorithm has to label new items with some predefined class. Unsupervised learning is the machine learning task of inferring a function to describe hidden structure from unlabeled data. For example, anomaly detection problem could be solved using methods of unsupervised learning. An algorithm needs to identify outliers that are very distinct from other points of a data set. Reinforcement learning is also a machine learning problem. It is a problem of getting a learner to act in the world so as to maximize its rewards. The learner interacts dynamically with its environment, moves from one state to another. Rewards are given based on the actions taken by the learner. Guidelines for which action to take in each state is called a policy. So, reinforcement learning algorithm has to try to efficiently find an optimal policy in which rewards are maximized. The learner is not told which actions to take, as in other forms of machine learning, but instead must discover which actions, to pre which actions produce the most reward by trying them out. In other words, the learner doesn't have any supervisor and it must learn from experience as it explores the range of possible states. And it needs to continuously update policy in response to new information. So policy is basically a mapping of states to actions. As you will see, multi-armed bandit problem is a subset of reinforcement learning. Multi-armed bandit algorithm is a learner. It takes some actions and environment returns some reward values to learner. And the learner has to find a policy which uh, leads to a maximum rewards. Before we get into multi-armed bandits, I'd like to state a problem close to our business so we can better understand what bandits are useful for and how we can apply them in our projects. Let's assume that we have an offer to promote and we want to test various slanders for it. We want to select a lender that generates more conversions than other lenders, for example, clicks on download button. Obviously, we don't know in advance how many clicks each lender will generate and we need an algorithm to find out what lender is the best. The traditional approach is to use A-B testing. Before you start the experiment, you must decide what level of statistical significance is enough for you. Then you start to send visitors to all lenders simultaneously and show them to users randomly. All lenders get equal share of visitors. For instance, if we have three lenders, each lender gets one third of all visitors. When the level of significance is achieved, you look what lender is the best performer and throw away other variants and work with the winner. This approach assumes we run an experiment for a long enough time. We don't interrupt it. We don't change anything while it runs. We just wait patiently. It's even advisable not to look at intermediate results at all to prevent yourself from making bad premature decisions. Apart from waiting for too long, you are throwing away your money on ineffective flanders throughout the experiment and you can do nothing with it if you want the experiment to be significant. Almost 85 years ago in 1933, a scientist named William Thompson was interested in similar problem. Obviously, he didn't know anything about websites and lender optimization, but he wanted to solve much more important problem. As you may know, new medical drugs should pass blind trials in order to become publicly available. That's when a drug is given to one group of patients and another group gets placebo. Neither patients nor researchers know what drugs are given to particular patients. Only after experiment is conducted, researchers are able to get results of experiment. So if you think about it, it's really cruel to continue such experiment if you may know that some drug really works, but we need to continue to give other patients ineffective drugs or placebo 
so the whole experiment can be significant, statistically significant. And Thompson wanted to adapt treatment allocations on the fly, as the drug appears more or less effective. So clinical trials is one of the first intended applications of multi out bandit model. Uh, the name uh, multi out bandit itself comes from studies of these two guys, Frederick and Robert. In 1950s, they decided to study animal learning and ran trials on mice and then on humans. The mice uh, faced the dilemma of choosing to go left or right after starting in the bottom of a T-shaped maze, not knowing each time at which end they will find food. To study a similar setting in humans, uh, they got to unbanded machine, where humans could choose to pull either the left or the right arm of the machine each given a random payoff with a distribution of payoffs for each arm unknown to the human player. Now, imagine that you are playing on this two armed bandit machine and you already pulled each lever five times, resulting in the payoffs in the table. As you can see, the left arm generated 20 points and the right arm only 10 points in five trials. The left arm appears to be doing a little better. The average payoff for this arm is 4 points per round, while that of the right arm is only 2 points per round. Let's say you have 20 more trials altogether. How would you pull the arms in the remaining trials? Will you keep pulling the left arm and ignore the right, or would you pull the right arm a few more times, hoping that it might get better? So this is the essence of explore-exploit dilemma. It's a fundamental dilemma a learner faces when choosing between uncertain options. Should one explore an option that looks inferior, or should one exploit one's knowledge and just go with the currently best looking option? How to maintain the balance between exploration and exploitation is a basis of bandit problems. Let's get back to our website optimization case. multi armed bandit algorithms are more flexible and generally more efficient than A-B tests. In our case, each lander is a bandit's arm. Each visitor is a pull of an arm, and clicks are rewards that arms generate. We have no prior knowledge about probability distribution of rewards that lenders generate, and we need to find that out. One of the simplest algorithms is called Epsilon Greedy Strategy. This algorithm explores, that is, it pulls arms randomly with epsilon probability. And with 1 minus epsilon probability, it pulls the best arm without any randomization. So when the algorithm sees that some lender performs better than others, it tends to show a leading lender more frequently. For instance, if lender C makes more conversions than other two pages, the algorithm will prefer to show lender C rather than A or B. A typical value of epsilon is one tenth. In our case, it means that the best lender gets roughly 93% of all visitors, and other two lenders get about 3% each. While the best lender gets major part of traffic, it is possible for other lenders to be the best lender even on their small share of traffic and become a new best arm. For instance, if lender C becomes less performant and lender B generates a lot of conversions, the algorithm will treat it as the new best arm. We can show the process of decision making for each visitor this way. At first, algorithm decides if it's going to explore or exploit. With probability of 1 minus epsilon, it exploits the best arm. With probability of epsilon, it explores. The best arm can also be chosen on this step. That is, all arms have an equal chance to be chosen for exploration. Exploration part gives all arms an opportunity to become the best arm. Now let's move on to the coding part of the talk. Uh, here you can see a class that implements Epsilon Greedy algorithm. We have a constructor and two methods, select arm and update. Constructor takes an object with two possible options, epsilon value and number of arms. Select arm method returns an index, which we then use to get an arm. We'll get back to it a little bit later. 
when we have a num, we pull it. For instance, we show a lender. Eventually, we receive reward value. For example, we get 1 if user clicked or 0 if there was no click. After that, we call update method passing it arm index and received reward value. Select arm method is uh, soft descriptive, so I won't explain it. The update method increments counter of pulls of selected arm. Uh, it's the first line of the method. And then it updates cumulative moving average of arms reward as the third line of the update method. It's possible to use other update functions, for example, moving median or exponential moving average, which puts more weight on recent data points, so they have more influence on outcomes than old ones. Uh, in order to test the algorithm, we need to implement ARMs themselves. On this slide, you see Bernoulli ARM. It's called so because it's based on Bernoulli distribution. It generates value 1 with probability p and value 0 with probability 1 minus p. And here you see our simulation function that we will use to test our Epsilon Greedy class. Algo class is a class of a bandit algorithm we want to test. Options is an object of algorithm parameters. Arms is an array of ARM objects. In our case, it will be an array of Bernoulli ARM instances. And horizon is a number of pools we want to simulate. At the start, we initialize arrays to store history of simulation. We're going to return all these arrays from the function. Then we instantiate our algorithm that we're going to test. Then we get into the main simulation loop, which is going to run until t variable hits horizon. At the start of the loop, we select an arm, we pull it and get a reward value, call update method to refresh internal state of algo instance, and finally update our result arrays. When the loop ends, we return data from function for subsequent analysis. Uh, let's see how that works out. Assume we've got five arms that generate rewards with random probabilities between 0 and 1 tenth. In other words, we have five lenders with click-through rates from 0 to 10 percent. Let's run an experiment with epsilon value of 1 tenth and horizon of 100,000. You can see that arm number 4 was pulled roughly 90,000 times, and other arms were pulled significantly less often. We may assume from these numbers that arm number 4 is the best. We don't know yet underlying distributions of our arms, so let's check it out. And right, we see that probability value of arm number 4 equals to 1 tenth, and it's the greatest probability across all arms. That means that the algorithm correctly identified the best arm from 5 available options and pulled primarily this arm rather than others. And the total amount of collected rewards is a little bit less than 9,000 points. Now, I'd like to connect all those values together. Statistically, the maximum amount of reward you can get from given arms is equal to horizon value multiplied by probability of the best available arm. In this case, the maximum we can get is 10,000 points or clicks. We've got only 9,000 points, so our re regret is 1,000 points. We could have got 10,000 points if we used arm number 4 all the time, but we didn't know that it's the best one. We had to learn it through exploration. And in fact, we can't get closer to maximum reward as we always explore with probability of epsilon. So we always go into have some regret while we use this simple epsilon greedy algorithm. There are modifications of this algo that improve on that. For example, epsilon decreasing strategy is similar to epsilon greedy, but value of epsilon decreases as the experiment progresses, which makes the algorithm to explore more at the start and move to highly exploitative behavior closer to the end. 
All right, we discussed one of the simplest bandit algorithms. It's not the best solution for real business problems, but in any case, it is better than nothing or even A-B testing. In fact, if you set epsilon to one, you'll end up with the same A-B testing as usual, because algorithm will always choose to explore as happens in A-B testing as well. That's it for today. Of course, there are a lot more to talk about, but I'm gonna stop here. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer you on our Slack channel. Thank you for watching.